Robert. Robert. How do I tell Celia? What the hell am I supposed to say? You want to let me tell? That wouldn't help. I mean, I can just hear myself now. By the way, Celia, the real Grant is alive and living in New York City. And I've got to change my name because we're moving to Montana where the government set me up with a job sheep herding. All right. There's no easy way to break it to her. Robert, she's going to be destroyed. Don't you realize what that woman has gone through? She has put up with everything up to this point, but nobody can expect her to, to accept this. Grant, look, starting a new life doesn't have to be a negative thing. A lot of people would kill for the chance. Yes, but we have a choice. Stay here? Face him. Explain it to him. Robert, I know Grant Putnam. I know... I know how he thinks. I know exactly how he'll react. It is the same way I'd react. The guy's been locked up for eight years. But that doesn't mean he'll be irrational. His cup will hardly be running over with the milk of human kindness. Robert, I'm through running! All right. All right. Promise me this. Don't dismiss the relocation idea. Please. You're trying awfully hard to get rid of me. I'm trying to protect you. Now, there's a big difference. I'll think it over. WSB, Grant. Looks like our department and their organization are going to be working together again. We're going to have to ask you to keep this whole thing in the strictest confidence. Why? Some decisions have to be made in regard to crimes committed against the real Grant Putnam. What kinds of decisions, Mr. Jackson? I can't say any more. But WSB is throwing a lid on the whole thing. All right. I'll keep quiet about it. I'll tell Celia to do this. No, you're not to say anything to Celia. They said that specifically. Are you serious? My orders come from the top, Grant. You're to say nothing to her. As far as Celia and the rest of the world are concerned, the real Grant Putnam is dead. And we're going to keep it that way. Monica? Hello. Anything looks like a dividend check? Um, don't think so. I'm not interested then. Uh-oh. And if it's a letter from Beatrice, I'm sure not interested in that either. Oh, no offense, Jimmy Lee. No, it's from a law firm. I don't even recognize the name. Well, I hope it's not about Grant. Why do you always expect the worst? I don't know. Reflex past experience. incredible. Uh-uh. Here it comes. A woman by the name of Mrs. Keith Allison, who's a widow, I think she's a cousin to a woman named Monica Sharp. Never heard of her. We should trace the name to the orphanage where I was brought up. Monica, I didn't know you were an orphan. Oh, yes. Monica's life is full of tad tales. <laughs> Shut up, Edward. She wants to know if, uh, Monica Quartermain is Monica Sharp. Are you? Are you? I, I don't, uh... Well, I don't know. I, I know when I got to the orphanage that Sharp is the name that they gave me. It'd be incredible if, if she could give me some information. The only thing that woman's gonna give you is trouble. She and that attorney of hers, all they want is Quartermain money. Edward, you think that about everybody. Take it from me, I know firsthand. You want my advice, Monica? No. Well, listen to it anyway. Don't answer it. If you do, you're just going to have some money-grubbing, phony relative showing up on the doorstep, pretending to fill you in on everything about your past life. You know, if this woman has any information about my life, my past, anything, I would like to hear it. I'm telling you, Monica, the woman is a gold digger. Okay, if she is, then it's my problem. Yeah, well, if you have a problem, we all have a problem. Well, thank you, Edward. I didn't mean that sympathetically. Well, I tell you what, I think you should talk to that woman. Don't encourage her, Jimmy Lee. Why not? I know what it's like to look for your family. I appreciate that, Jimmy Lee. I suppose that was meant to try to make me feel guilty. Well, does it? No. Why should it? You found me, didn't you? Well, it wasn't easy. No. There, you see, Monica, this is causing trouble already. Why do you just have to wallow in doom and gloom? Are you going to answer the letter? I want to, uh, but maybe I should talk to Alan first. That's a good idea. He'll just tell you the whole thing is preposterous. 
No, I don't think he will, Edward. I think, on the contrary, he will tell me that I am doing exactly what I should be doing. Well, then why waste money on a long-distance phone call to that medical conference or whatever it is he's attending? Absolutely right. You're right, Edward. I shouldn't. I should make a long-distance phone call to this woman's attorney. Great. What do you got to lose? <laughs> don't ask. Turncoat. There's nothing wrong with her trying to find out about her family. How do we know this woman is? It'll probably end up just some wild goose chase. Well, what if it is? Well, I shudder to think. If there's anything we don't need, it's another relative with a mouth like Monica's around here flapping in the breeze. <laughs> Edward, can we get back to the Avalon? Kid, huh? Gladly. Oh, Lord, I've got a board meeting in half an hour. We've got to come to a decision on this real soon. Yeah, well, well, come on. Why don't we have another meeting about this tomorrow? Okay. Well, that takes care of that. Yeah? Takes care of what? Well, it, it takes care of uh, this letter. The attorney said that uh, Mrs. Keith Allison is going to be coming to Port Charles very soon, and she'll contact me then. Mm -hmm. Right. Circle the date on my calendar. I think that's great news. Yes. So do I. If she does have information, certainly fill in a very large gap in my life. Don't count on it, Monica. Right, Edward. I certainly will keep all my emotions in check. And in the meantime, I shall go perform surgery. Excuse me, boys. Well, I wonder if this Miss Allison is Monica's relative. Well, I hope not. We've had enough surprises in this household to last us all a lifetime. Said I was sorry. You know, every time I have asked you to do anything lately, it's like I'm talking to a brick wall. Well, I have a lot on my mind these days. I mean, the ban and everything, it's a lot of... The scam thickens. What now? Well, it seems I'm quite a bit more advanced than Mr. Hannibal had figured. Quick learn, huh? He doesn't want to waste my time with beginner's routines. Yeah, consider it. He graciously allowed that I only need eight lessons, for the price of ten, of course. Cheaper twice the price. Mr. Hannibal works extra hard with us born dancers, you know. No doubt. Anyway, I'd better be off. Another step towards Broadway. Listen, before you go, why don't you slip this on? What? It's the brace that I took off you the other day. What's the matter? It wasn't your style? Cute. Now, put it on. No, not for my class. Well, it'll hardly weigh you down. I never wear jewelry when I dance. You'll wear this piece of jewelry, Fontaine, otherwise you ain't going. Excuse me. Well, good morning, Putnam. Ready to go to work? Uh, no. You're not quitting me, are you? <laughs> Hardly. Good. The turnover in this business is killing us. Yes, sir. I, uh, I do need some time off today, though. Oh, what for? There's something I have to do. Well, couldn't it wait till after work? Uh, no, I'm afraid it can't. Oh, I don't know, Putnam. We're short of men as it is today, and it's just... Yeah, I, I, I know it's a problem for you, but I wouldn't even have asked if it weren't really important. I believe you, but... Hi, boss. Boss? What the hell are you talking about? Who's boss? Well, mine. And yours. Where did you get this? I found it on the floor the other day after Undersecretary Jackson left. Must have fallen out of his dossier. Yeah, I suppose so. The city's grown to be even more beautiful, wouldn't you say? I'm hoping you're not thinking about her in the old way. Of course not, Henry. I was just making an observation. Allow me. If you insist. Humor me. There. So what are your plans for today? Oh, I've got Jackson, Grant, Chernin. Oh, what a mess. I don't know what to call him anymore. Oh, imagine how he feels. <sighs> well, anyway, they're dropping by later on, and hopefully Grant will have come to some decision regarding this identity business. How can he do that? How can he not? I mean, either way, the poor guy's gonna lose. If it were me, I'd stay here and face whatever's coming. You just don't want to lose two good friends. Do you? Of course not. But look, I'm gonna understand if he decides to move on. Well, so would I. I just wouldn't like it very much. Yeah. Poor Celia, this must be just tearing her apart. She doesn't know yet. Well, she has to. Doesn't she? Well, why wouldn't Grant tell her? Because the State Department said that she wasn't to be informed. 
But that's so unfair. She has a right to be in on this decision. It's her life, hey, wait, too. Wait, wait, wait a minute. This is not my idea. This comes from the State Department. But regardless, whatever decision the grant makes will be in Celia's best interest. Well, I'm glad I'm not in his shoes. Who oh, hers. Yeah, well, your shoes are in enough hot water at the moment with this dance scam you're trying to expose. I'm enjoying it. Well, I'm not. However, this uh, should help reassure me a little bit. Now, pay attention while I show you how to operate it. Uh, you mean it does something more than just sit there? One very important thing. Now, when you press the clasp here, it sends out an electronic signal, which comes directly to me, so I will always know exactly where you are. Good work, 007. But save it for someone who needs it. I'm not going to be in any danger. Look, Holly, if I thought that, I wouldn't have had it done in the first place. Listen, I appreciate the offer, but really, it's not necessary. I will be the judge of that. But, Robert... But me no buts. No, I never wanted you involved in this in the first place. You just frightened that I'd steal your thunder. Please, don't be an idiot. You want to play Nancy Drew? Let's have a couple of safety factors, all right? Boy, I'll sport. Listen, you don't wear that thing. Your Broadway career is kaput. Well, since you put it like that, I still think it's silly, but I'll do it. I thought so. Now, one more thing. What now? Be careful. Robert, don't you think you're overreacting just a tad here? I mean, I'm just playing with a small-time con artist. I'm not trying to break an international spy ring. You don't know how dangerous this Hannibal really is. It's been my experience with criminals. You get one cornered, you never know how they're going to react. I'm telling you for your own good, Grant. Forget you ever met Celia Putnam, Quartermain, whatever she decides to call herself. I can't. There are just too many questions. Let them remain unanswered. Get on with your life and allow her to do the same. It's not that simple. Well, I didn't say it was, but it is necessary. Celia and I grew up together. I've known Celia since... forever. How could she have believed that that imposter was me? Nobody could be that convincing. Well, apparently Andre Chernin was. That's another thing I don't understand. How could the DVX have accumulated all of that background information on me? The DVX is absolutely insidious. They do their homework and they do it right. Well, look at that newspaper photograph. It's you. No. Not but a perfect likeness. Now, I know I've seen the man. The resemblance is uncanny. He was made to look exactly like you. It is incredible. You know, the... DVX must have been studying you a long time prior to your abduction. They must have gathered a considerable amount of data pertaining to every facet of your life. That thoroughness is truly remarkable. Not to mention extremely frightening. Understood. I can see how most people would have been feel, fooled, but Celia? Now, you have to remember, there was a period of years there when you two didn't see each other. Now, young people changed quite a lot in that short period of time. Not that much. Well, in your case, it was enough. All the more reason for me to have a look myself. What's the point? A new life awaits you. And you've got more than enough money to do almost anything you want. Except get back those eight missing years. Forget them. They have nothing to offer you now. Get on with your future. I intend to, Henry. But I can't build a future on nothing. Countless people have. I don't care about countless people. I've got to have a foundation. I, I can't just pretend that those, those years didn't happen. All right, very well. If you can't ignore them, at least try to put them in behind you. And the way to do that is not to dwell on the past, but to get on with the future. Not yet. And listen to me. Now, I know how curious you are about Celia. But you've got to realize she is not the girl you knew. Was she? She's fully aware that your namesake is an imposter and she chooses to stay with them. They are still married, and your arrival on the scene is not going to change that. Perhaps not. It's a Pandora's box, Grant. Better left unopened. I suppose. 
suppose you're right, Ed. I don't believe this. Well, Grant, I've been trying to tell you for the last five minutes, it's not the way it seems. Well, then what exactly is it? A coincidence. Right. In a way, I guess I am your boss. You haven't figured it out yet? It's got nothing to do with why you got this job. What I want to know is, what have you got to do with this job? This isn't a Holt Quartermain company. No, but we are subcontracted by them. I might have known. Well, how does that change things? Take a wild guess. Look, there's absolutely no reason why you can't continue to work here just like you have been. I can think of one reason. Grant, just because you don't like me doesn't mean you can't continue to work for me. If you do your job, we won't have anything to do with one another. I know a better way to ensure that. But why are you so ticked off? I'm never even here. You can ask Richard. I barely recognize him myself. Look, why don't we just forget that I came in here this morning, huh? No, thanks, Jimmy Lee. I may need a job, but I'll tell you, I haven't stooped so low that I'd take a favor from you. Grant, it is not a favor. You're damn right it isn't. Not anymore. I quit. Kicking myself from here to New York City and back. Why? Ah, oh, it's all my fault. Oh, don't be silly. I never should have argued with her. It only made our situation worse, and... Ah, oh, then I walked out on her. It's, it's all because of Weber and that lousy machinery. Honey, you did not cause this. No, I sure as hell helped it along. No words caused this. Nothing you said brought on this hemorrhage. How can you be so sure? Just trust me. But do you know something? I know that you're not responsible. But how do you know? Who are you? The old broth? Yeah, that's right. Who are you? I, I already give this to you. What is this? Have a good one. Who's that doctor? Oh, damn. Bad news? When it rains, it pours. It's another lawsuit against the lease. Oh, just what you need. Can you believe the nerve of that guy? Comes waltzing in here and slaps me with some papers. I mean, this is a hospital room. There's nothing sacred anymore. What are you going to do about it? I'd like to wring that clown's neck. Honey, that's not going to solve your legal problems. That's true. But I know somebody that will. Yeah, let me speak to Jake Meyer, please. This is D.L. Brock. Uh, do you know where he is? Well, how about when he'll be back? Uh, then find him. You heard me. Track him down wherever he is. Just tell him to get right over to the hospital. I need to see him, yes. No, I can't leave here. I'm not moving one step from my wife's bedside. Goodbye. <laughs> Gilbert. Speaking. Mr. Gilbert, this is Robert Scorpio. I'm the commissioner of police in Port Charles. Whatever it is, I know nothing about it. I've never even been to Port Charles. Oh, your reputation precedes you. Oh? There's a new dance instructor in town, name of Hannibal. Dance? Uh, you mean like in the cha-cha-cha? I mean like in Broadway. I see. Well, what does this Hannibal have to do with me? Well, I was hoping that you could tell me that. He's opened a studio here and uh, begun offering lessons. Now, he started attracting quite a few students, largely on the strength of guaranteeing them an audition with you. What? Uh, are you auditioning for a Broadway musical now? Well, yes, hopscotch girls. Uh-huh. That's the carrot he's dangling in front of the donkeys. Pardon? Do you have a professional tie with any dance school? Absolutely not. Then I most definitely conduct my own auditions. I'd never trust anyone else to do that. Yeah, that's what we figured. The man's a fraud. Looks that way. Then what are you going to do about it? Cancel my lessons. Commissioner, I won't have my name exploited by some two-bit con man. He's asking a good deal more than two bits, Mr. Gilbert, but I see your point. I'll sue! That's your privilege. But for now, let's give Hannibal some rope and see what he does with it. Do you think that's wise? I want to make absolutely sure we've got an airtight case before we drop the net on him. Otherwise, if you're back on the streets in 24 hours and pull some other scam. Well, if you're sure. Don't worry. You've got Hannibal under 
close surveillance. I think the best thing for you to do now is just to sit tight and let us handle it. Uh, you'll let me know what happened. You'll be the first. Very well. Oh, well, feel free to call on me if I can be of any service at all. Oh, I will, but I don't need your help, believe me. I'd dearly love to bring this sordid affair to a speedy conclusion, Commissioner. I've worked very hard to establish my reputation. This charlatan can destroy it in a matter of days. Well, we're doing our best, Mr. Gilbert. In fact, I've assigned one of our top detectives to the case. She's closing in on Hannibal right now. Five, six, spin and down. Very good. <laughs> very, very good. Really? Margaret, you're a natural. Your teaching, Mr. Hannibal, you brought out things in me I never knew I had. It's certainly been a pleasant surprise. <laughs> I knew you had talent, but I never expected you to pick up the technique so quickly. So do you think I'm ready to audition for Ron Gilbert? My dear, I can practically guarantee it. <laughs> in fact, you may not even need seven more lessons. You think so? Oh, Melissa, uh, come on in. Have a seat. I'll be right with you. Well, we'll see how you do at your next session, but I wouldn't be at all surprised if you could skip several more lessons. Oh, that would be marvelous. You know, uh, the road to Broadway is paved with dreamers. Now, you can get there if you work very hard. It's up to you. I'll see you next time. Uh, Melissa, are we all set? Well, not exactly, Mr. Hannibal. And what do you mean? Well, I only have $15. And what are you doing here? Well, couldn't I just take one lesson? I mean, they're $15 a piece, right? Wrong. They're $150 for 10. Oh, I know, but I can't afford all 10. Melissa, I can't afford to take on a student who's only willing to meet me halfway. Now, I make a commitment to each and every dancer who walks through that door. If they're willing to give me their all, then I'm willing to help them on their road to start. But I want that more than anything. In fact, I can, I can do even more than that. I personally will do everything that I can to see to it that the greatest door of all is open to them. An audition with Roland Gilbert. But only to those students who would enroll in my complete course. Now, if you're not willing to go the distance, then neither am I. Oh, I am. It's just that I really can't afford to. Melissa, the road to Broadway is paved with dreamers. To get there, it takes talent, hard work, sacrifice. It requires an, an enormous physical investment. In comparison, the financial one is minimal. Oh, no, no, I know that. It's just that I'm I was in talking to school. Raleigh just the other day. Raleigh? He, Roland Gerbert. He was telling me about all the starry-eyed innocents who litter the path to the great white way. Dancers like yourself, who had the dream but are unwilling to pay the price. No, but I am. Believe me. I'm doing you a favor when I tell you, if you're unable to take all ten lessons, don't take any. You'd just be setting yourself up for a big disappointment. I just couldn't let you do that. I'll get the money, Mr. Hannibal, I swear. I will be back with $150. Somehow. You can't be too dedicated. Oh, you're still here. Yes, I'm just recovering. You gave me quite a workout today. Well, Roland Gilbert is a much harder taskmaster than I. I can hardly wait. So, how much can I get for the ring? Uh, it's not very valuable. It is to me. Huh. Well, then you sell it to yourself, huh? Oh, well, it belonged to my mother. Uh, I can't buy sentiment, just jewels. All right, how much? Uh, I'll give you a hundred bucks for it. Huh? What? It, you gotta take it or leave it. Yeah, but that's not enough. But it's more than it's worth. Look, it, I need $125. Then you gotta go to a bank, huh? Hey, I'm a salesman. I'm not a loan shark. Please, sir, it's really important. Yeah, yeah, it always is. If I don't get the money, I'll just die. Yeah, but if I give it to you, it'll kill me. One and a quarter, huh? $125, yes. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what's the matter with me. You know, a soft touch like me, I ought to be in the Peace Corps. Oh, you know? so you'll give it to me. Yeah, one, two, five, and not a penny more. No, 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 that's all I need. Twenty, forty, sixty, eighty, a hundred. Ooh. 
Thank you. Twenty-five. Thank you. Yeah, now, you do me a favor. What? Right? Yeah, you don't come back again. I mean, doing business with you on a regular basis, I'd be broken a week. <laughs> I've got what I wanted. I will not be back, I yeah, promise. Yeah, yeah. Hey, can I help you, lady? Mrs. Scorpio. Yeah, well, what do I owe this honor to? Just browsing. Ah, yeah, anything in particular? What a lovely ring. May I see it? Oh, yeah, a nice piece of merchandise. Matter of fact, it just come in. Cost me an arm and a leg. Mm, must be very valuable. Oh, yeah, it is. Would you hold it for me? You mean like an hawk? You do do that on occasion, don't you? Uh, not unless I have to. Hey, I'm sorry. I'd really like to help you, Mrs. Scorpio, but I'm a businessman, huh? You know, I gotta eat, too. Well, so what are you planning to do with the ring? Oh, I could get 250 for it easy. Yeah, well, I'll just sell it to the first buyer. You're looking at her. Yeah, you want to buy it? Yes, but not for $250. It's worth every penny. Oh, really? Then why did you tell the girl who just sold it to you that it wasn't worth more than $100? Uh, <laughs> you've been spying on me, huh? Ain't that illegal? No, more so than jacking up prices unfairly. Yeah, but what do you want from me? I'm a businessman. And I'm the police commissioner's wife. Uh, you ain't got a bull rank on me, are you? Just reminding you. Yeah, well, now I know where we stand. Yeah, well, at least let me make my money back on the deal. That's fair. I paid 150 for the ring. No, you didn't. You paid 125. I'll give you 130. That gives you five dollars for your trouble. Terrific. Now I can retire. Well, if you're not happy, we can oh, always no. renegotiate. No, no, no. That's fine. Any longer and you'll be talking me into paying you to take the rent. That's true. <laughs> so we have a deal. Hey, what choice do I got? You don't mind a check, do you? Oh, boy. Brett? Hello, Robert. Mr. Jackson, I, uh, I apologize if I've kept you waiting. Well, it's perfectly all right. Have you come to a decision? <clears throat> I thought I had, but I just don't know anymore. What changed your mind? Well, I was beginning to think that things might work out here after all. That it wouldn't be necessary for me and Celia to leave. Now I'm not sure. <laughs> now you think you should? I really don't know. I honestly believe that relocating is your best move. Yes, I know you do, sir. You know, of course, that even if you should decide to stay here in Port Charles, you'll have to assume a different name. You can't go on calling yourself Grant Putnam. How important is a name? <laughs> it depends on you. Believe me, once the news gets out that the real Grant Putnam is alive, you and Celia aren't going to have a moment's privacy. You think the publicity was bad before. Just wait. He's absolutely right, Grant. They're going to be all over you. I realize that. If I were you, I wouldn't hesitate to make a clean break. Put your past behind you. Get on with your life. It's certainly tempting. It's really the only solution. Yes. It would be if I just had myself to think about. Are you worried about your wife? Yes, I am. You see, I don't have a past anymore, Mr. Jackson. I've already cut myself off from all that. But Celia, Celia does. She could never contact her family or friends again. It would be as if she were dead. No, no, I'm just gonna have to stick with my original decision. I thank you very much for your generous offer, but Celia and I are going to stay right where we are. The matter is settled, then? Yes, sir, it is. I'm sorry to hear that, but of course it's your decision. I just hope you won't regret it. <laughs> you and me both. Well, I'd better be going. I have a lot to do. There's still a massive amount of work left. Preparing the State Department's official position on all this. Could you tell me one thing? How much time do I have before the, before the news becomes public? Well, you have a few days left, I'm quite certain of that. I'll contact you soon about setting up a new identity for yourself. Fine. I'll see myself out. Good day, gentlemen. Are you absolutely sure of this? Yeah, I am. It's gonna be rough on you and Celia. I know it is. Look. I'm curious. You walked in here earlier, 
You'd practically made your mind up. Now you've changed it. Why? <laughs> because I made a stupid, impulsive move. Celia and I had a had a little a little bit of an argument, and I ran out of the house thinking that things could never work out in Port Charles. And then the more that I thought about it, the more that I realized our leaving would only make her miserable. I see. Robert, I love that woman. And I'll be damned if I'm going to see her suffer because of me. Grant, you're making this hard on yourself. I can handle it. I hope so. Wouldn't you do the same thing for Holly? No question. All right, there's your answer. I'm glad you understand how I feel. Look, I... I really wish there was some way that I could... make this whole thing a little bit easier for you. Well, there really isn't. This is just something that Celia and I are gonna have to face alone. Not quite. But friends. I'll never forget that. Where are you going now? I'm gonna go out, and I'm gonna take a nice long walk, sort out my thoughts, and after I cool down, I'm going to rush straight home and tell my wife how much I love her. Long list. I was doing a little sleuthing on the side. Read it, Doc. What'd you find out? A young woman showed up at the dance studio just as I was finishing my lesson. Hmm? Her name was Melissa. She offered Hannibal $15 for one lesson. And he turned it down, of course. Flat. Biggest. And he, he said it was all or nothing, and he gave the poor girl such a spiel that she went straight off to Benny's and sold a ring that her mother had had. Just so that she could give some money to dear sweet Hannibal. Right. Needless to say, Benny stuck it to her as well. Right again. She ended up selling him a $250 ring for $125. He's the salt of the earth. He's still in fine form. Not quite so fine. I bought it for $130. What would you do, break his knees? Just a little simple negotiating. The poor guy, he's gonna be in analysis for years. Well, it didn't hurt that my husband was a police commissioner. I'll bet. So what are you gonna do with uh, the ring? I'm gonna give it back to Melissa as soon as I exposed Hannibal for the fraud that I think he is. Well, he may have stumbled on something here. You know what? He actually mentioned cutting down the number of classes I'm going to be doing, again. Why, he must be quite a dancer. According to Hannibal, he thinks that I'm ready to audition for Roland Gilbert any day now. That'll be a, <clears throat> a big surprise, Mr. Gilbert. What do you mean? Call him this morning. What did he say? Mm. Robert! Never heard of Hannibal. He wanted to send the guy to the gas chamber. Oh, can you blame him? Well, needless to say, I dissuaded him from that course of action. However, I did say that I had one of my best men on the job. Oh, great. I do all the work, and your department gets all the credit. Well, welcome to the wonderful world of law enforcement. Anyway, you should be happy with a pat on the head for a job well done. You know, you really could be quite right about this. I knew it all along. Well, aren't you going to say it? What? I told you so. You just did, darling. Mm, I'm going to be living this down for years. You know something? Mm. I think when you step down as police commissioner, I might just take over, you know, keep it in the family. And tell me, did um, Madame Poirot learn anything else today? As a matter of fact, I did. What? Well, there was uh, this, and uh, this. And uh, we did one of these. What about the hucklebuck? <laughs> We're gonna just <laughs> come at the policeman's ball. <laughs> oh, Grant, I'm so sorry. Oh, it was my fault. I know all we've been through lately, and I should have understood. Will you ever forgive me? You are the most important thing in my life. I love you so much. If you don't want to take that stupid job, then just don't take it. You'll get something else, I know you will. And I'll stand behind you no matter what you decide to do. Something different. 
different. Just hold on. Hello? Darling, I'm at the floating rib. Can you meet me here for dinner? Who is this? Is there somebody else who calls you darling? Grant? I owe you an apology. Look, you and I have got a great deal to talk about. Can you get over here right away? This is David Hartman. Tomorrow in Good Morning America, David Gergen, former aide to President Reagan, tells why he left the White House.